Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. Near Kalalam Bay in Washington, I was on a summer school field trip, 12-day hike with both teachers and high school students from my district. A black, hairy, bipedal creature emerged from the tree line at the stream. The creature was large in mass, but I am unsure of the height as the creature was partially bent over, looking and reaching sporadically into the stream. We shouted to look at the thing to our group. As the group stopped and turned, we ran back maybe 20 feet to rejoin the group. As we all stood there and watched, the creature came about half the distance of the stream towards the ocean, still looking and reaching into the water. While this was occurring, somebody started to whine as in fear, and the teachers with us began saying, calm down, it's not what you think. Just relax. We know what you're thinking, but trust us, it's not. Just calm down. Nobody up until this point had said the word Bigfoot yet. But then, as I remember, someone saw the other group way down the beach and tried to shout a warning to them. They yelled, Look, Bigfoot! At this point, the creature stood straight up and looked directly at us for a few seconds. I was so scared that I do not remember how tall it was, only that I have the impression of a very tall creature. It then turned to its left and strode back into the woodline. I do not know how many steps it took because, once again, I was very frightened. The other group started to run towards us, and our group started to go towards them until our teachers stopped us and made us wait there. One teacher went to the creek and met the other teachers that were in the second group there. One of the second group teachers herded the rest of the kids to us, where we were all now very excited and wanted to go check out the scene. There were either three or four teachers now conferring at the scene with two waiting with us. When the other teachers came back, they said that what we saw was not a Bigfoot, but just a black man who was camping in the tree line. They said that he was naked, and that was why he was all black. I remember someone asking if they had talked to this man, and we were all told to ignore it. Forget about it, and just plain drop the subject. All the teachers then started to really sell the black man's story, but we were not allowed to go and see him for ourselves. Only a few of us kids believed this at all, and this was the start of a few other incidents that happened to us along the way. Every day from that time thereafter, we all felt like we were being shadowed. Any time we were in a cliff or steep slope area, rocks would always fall either in front of the group or behind the group. In these areas, there was always tree cover on top of the cliff or slope, and nobody ever mentioned seeing anything. We made another day trip to Allen's Bay at the southwest portion of Lake Ozette to bathe after spending the day before repairing some benches and I believe a latrine at the Norwegian Memorial. During our hike to Allen's Bay, we all heard occasional heavy crashing in the woods. Sometimes it would be heard in front of the group and sometimes behind, sometimes to the left of the trail and sometimes to the right, sometimes near and sometimes far. The crashes would sound like a piece of heavy debris of some sort falling through the heavy undergrowth. They were never heard right after the other, and the duration between crashes was always different. When we got to the Allen's Bay, we all went swimming for a bit and washed in the lake. We never heard anything while we were there, but we heard a few more crashes on our way back to the beach. 
though not as many as on the trip to the lake. The teachers kept telling us that it was dead timber falling, which it could have been, but it would be very coincidental that that much timber fell along our path to the lake and back. We kept having the rock incident every day while we hiked. Once, I remember, we all encountered a horrendous smell just before we crossed a wooden footbridge over a large stream. We saw nothing and heard nothing, though. I remember the smell being extremely repulsive, but not like a skunk, rotten eggs, nor dead anything. I can't describe it accurately except for it being extremely powerful, extremely awful, and slightly ammonia-ish. We met up with our twin group that was hiking north from the Indian Reservation at La Push, where we were resupplied. So this would be day six or seven. They were all enthralled by our story, but said nothing had happened on their trip so far. We stayed the night down on the beach just south of La Push. I remember a huge gale hitting us that night. After La Push, we only occasionally saw falling rocks and lost the feeling of being followed. So I don't know if it was because of the town or the storm. The rock falls after La Push were also all smaller and could have been natural, as could all of them, but I don't believe the others were natural. I don't remember the other group saying anything about any incident on their way north from the push, but I remember all of us being kidded about it after summer school, and I don't like to discuss it much as it is a subject of much ridicule. I've tried to report it several times, but have backed away each time. This time, I decided to actually report it, as I'm tired of hiding it away. The school district that the summer school Ocean Trek was through was Shoreline School District for 12. The only teacher name I remember is a Mr. Benson, and I remember his son, Boyd, being there. But these are the only names I remember with any certainty. The second group of kids all complained of a slight stench in the area of the stream, but none of our group smelled anything. We were split up into two groups and coming back to our initial camp from a day trip to Cape Alava, where we were doing a biological exploration, biological exploration of the tide pools and area. I was in the lead group of about half the kids with, I think, two of the teachers. The second group was approximately one half to one mile behind us. I can't recall the distance of them well. Our group crossed a small stream that came out of the tree line about 50 to 75 meters from the waterline. I remember the stream being too big to jump across, but not very deep, only to just below the top of my hiking boot. After we had waded the stream and ran about another 300 meters down the beach, we were told to wait by one of the teachers. I remember stopping and turning around to wait for the rest of my group with a couple more kids as we were waiting and watching. As memory served, it was about five or six teachers and about 20 or 30 teenagers. The area was a coarse beach with sporadic driftwood accumulation. There was a heavy pine forest to the east and ocean to the west. Stream depth, I estimate to be around five to six inches deep and maybe 10 to 12 feet in width. The stream was fresh water. On to the next one. In Cowlitz County in Washington, at about 11 p.m., my friend Will and I were traveling westbound on State Road 4 when I noticed movement on the south side of the road. What I saw was a large black head and shoulders coming over the guardrail on the south side of the road. As I came to a stop, I turned on the high beam and saw the creature step easily over the guardrail. It was about eight feet tall with a kind of shiny black hair covering most of its body. As the creature walked, I noticed it never quite strained its legs, yet it had a graceful stride. Its arms hung fairly low, coming to just above the knee. It was very powerfully built, 
with massive chest and arms. Even though it was covered with hair, I could see its muscles flexing in its legs and arms. Most of the hair was an inch or two long, with some maybe four inches on the back and shoulders. This thing was big. In my estimation, it had to have weighed about 800 pounds or more. As it neared the center of the road, it actually turned and looked right at us. Doing so required it to turn its upper body as its head sat low between its shoulders. When it looked at us, its brow furrowed in what I believe to be a look of anger. It looked really PO'd. I could see its palm as it swung its arms and noticed it had either no or very little hair in the palm area. Also, the soles of its feet appeared to be devoid of hair. There was almost a hairline at the side of its feet. I also noticed was what appeared to be male genitalia, although the genitalia would have to be considered quite small when taking into account the size of the creature. It turned its head back to the forward position and continued across the road and out of my headlight. On the right north side of the road, here is basically a sheer cliff. It had to have climbed right on up. There was no other place it could have gone. I actually turned my truck in the direction it was moving to see it and could not. My friend, who was quite frightened, said, what the heck was that? I believe my response was something like, a damn Bigfoot. That was a damn Bigfoot. In my opinion, there's absolutely nothing else it could have been. On the south side of the road is the Columbia River. There is a rock bank that drops off about 20 feet to the river. On the north side of the road is a sheer cliff with a small amount of brush and some good-sized Douglas fir. I've heard that four adult males had a sighting on Germany Creek about a half a mile or so from where this occurred. On to the next one. Coming from Withaca towards Aberdeen, he would have been on the right-hand side of the street, like he had just crossed from being at the river, maybe. This was in Grays Harbor County in Washington. I was driving home around 3 a.m., returning from my sister's house. I came around the bend on B Street in Aberdeen, after Stewart Park, when I saw a huge, upright figure with dark fur. It seemed like it probably had just come from the river side of the road and didn't seem too concerned that I was driving past. It was watching me past the same as I was watching it. I was in disbelief and didn't even think to stop or even wake my then-boyfriend. I know this figure wasn't a bear. I know it wasn't just a huge man in a fur coat. I do know that what I saw was a Sasquatch. Since it was dark, the only real description I can give is that it was huge, probably around seven feet tall. It was mostly upright with a slight slouch, and the fur looked somewhat matted. The lighting conditions were probably headlights and maybe a light pole. The weather was clear. On to the next one. I was camping above the Alpenthal Ski Resort in Alpine Lake. I believe it is referred to as Snow Lake. I'm not certain that this is the correct name, however. It is a fairly exhaustive hike with substantial elevation gain and mileage from the trailhead. I took my brother's black lab for companionship, and we found a spot at the lake near the trail. As I was setting up camp that evening, I met a young couple and stopped briefly to ask for campsite recommendation. As I recall, we were the only people up there that evening. As night progressed, it got dark and fairly cold. I had a campfire going and could see the other site a few hundred yards down to the lakeside. At approximately 10 p.m. that evening, I saw my lab sniff the air and get extremely irritated as if another dog were in the area. Within seconds, the dog was up and pacing the campsite and acting very nervous. The hairs were standing on his back. 
at that same time, I heard a very loud scream that was high-pitched, but also changed octaves to a low, guttural roar at the end. The sound continued for at least a couple of minutes, and then nothing was heard after. I realized that a lake can carry sound fairly well, but this noise sounded as if it were literally just outside my camp. The following morning, I got up and stirred the fire. Around 6 a.m., the same couple I met that previous night came up to me to ask if I had heard the sound. I admit that I had heard something I couldn't describe other than a loud scream or roar. The people then described to me that they heard it right outside their campsite. As they described their experience, they mentioned that the creature was passing near their site and making the sound. They could actually hear tree branches snapping outside their camp. The couple indicated to me that the animal was pacing around their camp for a few minutes while it was wailing and roaring. These people were most certainly scared by something that evening, as was I. Apparently, they hadn't slept the entire night, and it looked like it to me. They appeared emotionally and physically exhausted. They never gave me their name, but they made the effort to come to me and inform me that they were leaving immediately, and I would be solo up on the lake. I realize that there are several animals in the Northwest that make various noises. Mountain lions, for example, this noise was nothing like I've ever heard. I have sampled the audio recordings online, but they don't compare to what I heard. The screams are very similar, but there were most certainly a change of octave as I described to a low roar. If instinct tells me anything, this was a territorial notice or noise. Needless to say, I left not long after the couple and haven't returned since. I always wondered if that same couple may have posted their experience. Hopefully, I'll get another chance to get back there. I feel privileged to have had the experience, even though it scared the heck out of me. My dog was scared, so was I. This was approximately 10 p.m. It was a beautiful, clear August night, dark with no moonlight that I can recall. On to the next one. On Franklin Falls Trail near Snoqualmie Pass in King County in Washington, a friend and I were hiking up to Franklin Falls on a warm late afternoon in August. The woods were pretty quiet with just the sounds of the river and the distinct sound of traffic coming from the interstate. As far as I know, we were alone on the trail, though it's a popular one. We were walking along, talking, and all of a sudden, there was a high, throaty, wailing scream, or rather, three or four of them, that echoed off the mountainsides and made the hair stand up on the backs of our neck. We were both raised in Washington and have spent a lot of time in the woods heard the sounds that are a lot different kinds of wildlife make and agreed that neither of us had ever heard anything like that before. It didn't sound like the source was really close, but the volume was incredible. And with the screams bouncing off the hills around us, it wasn't possible to judge the distance. It was a scary sound and unnerved us so badly that we turned around and went back to our car and drove away. I don't know if it was just fright or what, but we felt watched all the way. I will never forget that sound, and the closest thing I've heard is the recording that supposedly are the sounds of the Sasquatch. The memory of it still raises goosebumps and makes the hair at the back of my neck tingle. Well, we've only told a few friends about this, and I must admit, feeling a little odd telling it now, I just had the feeling of being watched on the way back to the car. It was on a trail through Hemlock and Douglas Fir Forest that winds along Denny Creek between two mountain ridges just below Snoqualmie Pass. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day. 
So be sure to hit that notification bell and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much. And until next time, bye!